today, beautiful. And you're looking real George today, George. Sign for the bread, huh? Then we'll smooch. Sign it on one condition. Make it a good one. That you give me that silly hat. Oh, this new hat really gets old. I uh, thought you were coming out to see me while I was on vacation. Oh, you didn't stay long enough. Oh, now you hear that, Papa? You made me come home from the lake just when George was going to show me a good time. You can joke, but it ain't funny. No. <laughs> what's eating big? Or what's he been eating? His own cooking? <laughs> Don't kid him, George. Papa wired me to come home because, because he said somebody called him up and threatened him. Threatened Vic? What for? Who knows? But whoever the guy was, he said he'd ruin our business unless Papa paid him $2,000. <laughs> he said he was selling polecat insurance. Shake down, huh? Oh, you're kidding. Like I was telling Pop, probably just some of those crew-cut kids from over in Clifton. You know, that, that crowd of hot rods. It's an old key, and he means business. Come in here and they buy a nothing burger and rowdy around the juke all night. We kick him out all the time. Figure they're sworn getting even. Why don't they pick on someone with a lot of dough, eh, Vic? <laughs> like my boss, the bum. Maybe because of you boss ain't an old man. Maybe because he lives around there all his life. Huh. I've seen it before. What right is this strange you got to come and buy Charlie's diner? Hey, foreigner. Who's gonna care what happens to Victor Arco? Hey, Diablo! Hey, Stinky Bomb! Papa, turn off the fire. George, open the window. Please don't go. We all clear in a minute. Vicky to give you a good line. Of rotten eggs? Nothing like this ever happened when Charlie was here. Papa, Papa, let's go outside. Hey, there, Kitty. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Wait a minute, fellas, please. If... <coughs> Look at him go. Tonight it'll be all over the county. Don't stop at Charlie's. No man don't keep the place clean. Just wait. Yeah, tough break. All that food is open. We gotta pitch it out. Just kids, huh? Some joke, huh? You want? I'll call the cops for you. Hey, Chef, what's the special for more? A toasted mattress? <laughs> we all fixing it just a... I called the cops. I want the cops to call them myself. So they can come and laugh at Vic Rocco too, huh? I know how you feel. Well, you still get my trade. Yeah, sure. But who else? You heard what the fella said? Things like this never happened when Charlie's got the place. Like I said, tough break. See ya, buddy. Bye, George. Uh, thanks. I'd settle for Oh, now, wait a minute, Paul. You aren't thinking of paying any $2,000 for some wise guy kid, are you? Look, Betty. I seen this happen in the old country. I seen it happen in the city when you was a little girl. I see what happens to the brave man who says, I won't pay. Next time the bomb's a little bigger and somebody's really get hurt. I'm an old man, Carissima. I don't want to have to fight. It's better to pay. Yeah? Well, maybe I don't think so. Wait, mister, don't go in. I, I try to stop you, mister. I wish you had. You the proprietor? Yeah, I'm the boss. Sorry, mister, we had a little trouble. Somebody trying to shake you down? How did you know? I certainly know a stench bomb when I meet it. That's an old racketeer's dodge where I come from. Who called the police? Nobody. Well, somebody's going to, right now. Well, you, let me give you a lift into town. You got a good rope down with ammonia. That'll get rid of the worst of it. And keep your blowers on full. Thanks, mister. No but... trouble. I'm going to Kennedy's Lodge. It's not out of the way at all. Well, thanks, mister. Uh... Barnett. Mike Barnett. You mean you can't do anything to help me? I didn't say that. What, what I mean is I can't spare a man to do nothing but sit in your diner drinking coffee all day on the off chance that some high school kid is going to come in and ask for $2,000. Would you? If it was still Charlie's place? What do you mean? Miss Rocco means that she and her father are entitled to police protection. The whole township is entitled to police protection, Barnett. And they'll get just as much as a four-man department can give them, but no more. I appreciate your problem, officer, but Miss Rocco and her father have reason to suspect imminent peril. Doesn't that warrant special consideration? Yes. All right, I'll have a man drop in at your place whenever I can shake one loose. That might not be till after the next bomb goes off. Okay, if your father gets another phone call or extortion note, 
let me know and I'll come over myself. Well, how will she know? Her father might not even tell her. Why don't you take the case yourself, Mr. Barnett? Mr. Barnett? Why, he's Mr. Just... Barnett is Mike Barnett, a private investigator. He is? That's right, isn't it? From New York City? Why, of course. I read an article about you in Look Magazine. It's you, huh? I'm afraid it is, and I'm up here to do some fishing. That's all right. I couldn't ask you to do it anyway. Believe me, I wish you would. I'm swamped, and I'm not too blame proud to ask for your help. I suppose you get paid a lot of money. Well, I pay a lot of money just not to have to pay any to some crook. But that's not the point. This is my vacation. Of course. Anyway, it's not really important enough for you. No, that isn't fair. I know it. But you see, to Pop and me, it means everything. I'm sure it does, Miss Rocco. Betty. Betty, but I came up here to fish, and I'm going to fish. Hey, I thought you were going fishing. You knew I'd be back. Well, I wasn't sure, but I told Pop that you would, and that you'd help us. How'd he take it? In Italian, I'm not sure. But in English, he finally agreed to go along with it. Did you get any more phone calls? No. Anybody in there now? Just Pop, cleaning up. The only customer we had all morning walked out. The ammonia smells worse than that egg. I have to find an excuse for hanging around. If anyone asks, we met on your vacation, I'm your boyfriend. Hey, this could be worse. As a matter of fact, on my vacation, it was. <laughs> Come on in and see Pop, honey. Okay, sweetie. Pop, Mr. Barnett said that he'd help us if we do exactly as he says. You got a wonderful daughter, Mr. Rocco. Oh, thank you, Mr. Barnett. You're a very nice man. But I think it's better I pay the money to this malfattore, and then nobody's have any more trouble. Mr. Rocco, extortion is like blackmail. It keeps right on. When your savings are gone, I'll watch your cash register until it takes big enough to make another grab. They'll put you out of business and make you pay for the privilege. Okay. I told Betty i stick along with you, so uh, I do it. For a while, anyhow. What do you want to know? Where do you get your eggs? I buy them fresh from a farmer over near Hillary. Did you take that fragrant one from here? See. Si. Who else has access to this refrigerator? Oh, all the root men. Milk man, pie man, beer man, pa, me. We got a night man on weekends. And some of those wise apple kids help themselves here when we're busy. You mean practically anybody. Did you happen to find a piece of the eggshell that did the damage? No. I did. It's in the cash register. Good a place as any. Nothing else in there now. It's riodide, all right. What's that? Well, it's so unpleasant you won't find it in any high school chemistry lab. So I don't think it was any hot rod kid who did it. Whoever did it pinholed the eggshell, loaded the egg, and pasted this over the hole. What is it? It's like a little piece of wax paper. Well, all we can do now is wait until you hear from the shake artist. They usually don't waste time. I better tell you, he telephoned already. What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to worry you. I was going to go and pay him. Did you recognize his voice? No. It sounded like a man. It was no kid. What do you want you to do? He says to uh, walk along the river road at uh, 9.30 this morning. It's 9 o'clock now. I'm supposed to drop the money on the road and uh, keep it going and no look back. We've just got time. What are we going to do? What I came up here to do. We're going fishing. I don't know about you, but I feel kind of silly fishing without bait. We're the bait. Hey. Here comes that blue convertible again. It's the same one, all right. But it doesn't mean a thing to me. Well, it does to me. Assuming our man came out here at all, there's a good chance he's in that car. We can't let him get too much of a head start. I just hope that deputy chief sent a man to your diner. Oh, I don't like it, Mike. Suppose he gets sore at my pop for not showing. He'd have to be in danger. He's been in danger ever since he fried that egg. What's the matter? What happened? He didn't show up. Take that trunk over to Hillary and dump it. Pick up another one, be back here by 3 o'clock and I'll get going. Why can't we use this one again? There were some people in an outboard when I drove down the river road. They didn't see it, did they? Shut up, will you? Get that car out of here! 
By now it's hotter than a second-hand bazooka. Me. I'm the guy who talked it up and down the highway so the boys would come back. That's right. He said you had the best gunk burgers in the state. <laughs> hey, George, when you're in the army, you ever eat with your gas mask on? <laughs> What's fresh today, baby? Besides him, everything. He had a stock over, you know. Hey, give me a cupcake and coffee, huh? Sure. Burgers are there. Here they are. To go. Go with them, huh? Hey, I want them with. You got them with. I meant with chlorophyll. <laughs> Let's go, fellas. Oh, excuse me. We're back in business, honey. It sure does, sweetheart. <laughs> How's everything, Rick? Just fine. Can I get you something? Oh, thanks. I just came to propose to your daughter. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a cup of coffee. I thought I was your boyfriend. Why, sure you are, George. He's just a fellow I met at the lake. Baby, you really break their hearts, don't you? Have to go wait on a customer. What do you got under here, Vic? An oven? Oven? No, it's a silverware. Where's all the heat coming from? Look Bill! Up. Hey, what's the idea? You all right, Freddy? What was that? What happened? Gee, hey, Papa! Hey, what kind of boy you around here? Hey, 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 look, fellas, wait a minute. Nobody's to hurt the other. Please, wait a minute. I was close. You sure you're all right, Betty? I'm mad. Thanks, mister, for knocking me down. Thank the duck law. You know what that is? Nope. It's an old law of physics. Well, you must be Mike Barnett. Well, you must be the man Deputy White sent over. Now you're satisfied? Sit down and use the real bomb. People come in here to eat, not to get I can oh, take it easy, Pop. No one got hurt. What about my diner? I suppose she don't get hurt. Well, let's go inside and see how much damage it did do. It's cleared out in there. Who was sitting here where I sat just before I came in? Nobody since I was here. That means whoever put the bomb here was sitting on another stool. Could have been any other stool. Look at this. A cork. What's this? A piece of the bottle. Chocolate. That means there must have been chocolate on the package wrap. There it is. Somebody spilled a big blob of chocolate and the bottle picked up some. That means whoever put the bottle over there was sitting right here. Betty, who was sitting right here just before the explosion? Gosh, I don't remember. There were some strangers. No one you knew? Think hard. Well, Luke was here, the fellow that owns the dry clean as a fresh guy. That's good. Go on. And uh, Gus, he's the milkman. He was here, I think. Okay, go on. And uh, George, the bread man. He was here, the one with the funny hat. The bread man. Let me see a new loaf of bread. Wrap. This is the piece of wax paper that was used to cover the end of the egg. They match. Where does George live? Oh, Mike, George wouldn't... Where does George live? Oh, I don't know, Okay, but... we'll find out from his boss. You keep an eye on Vic. You come with me. I'm glad I 
I bought you. Lend me a bobby pen, will you? You should have been a crook. something, a couple of strips of zinc. I think we caught our fish. I get it. It's probably better. Charlie's Diner, Victor Rocco's talking. Listen, Rocco, I'm giving you one more chance. You got a daughter. You wouldn't want nothing to happen to her, right? No. Okay. Now get that two grand and do exactly like I told you before. River Road, half an hour. You look back or call the cops, you not only won't have no business, but you won't have anybody to leave it to. Mr. Rocco? Uh, it was uh, Mr. Barnett. Uh, he wants you to call the office. Yeah? Wonder what's up. on schedule, we should meet him any minute. I want to stop at this gas station, find out if they've seen him pass this way, and I want to call the state police. I'll just be a minute. George. That makes everything just dandy. Mike, what's the matter to the police? Is Pop... Well, finally, got another phone call and he managed to slip away from the special deputy. Well, then he'll try to meet George. We gotta find George before that happens. <laughs> this is the River Road, but I don't know whether to speed up or slow down. I don't know whether we beat him here or not. Oh, we did. There he is behind us, see? He may have a gun. You better get down on the floor. He may use it. What's the matter with you, mister? I almost hit you. You bet you did. You're kind of young to be driving a truck. Yeah, how old do you have to be? Old enough to have a commercial license. Where's yours? Uh, I left it home. Yeah, where's that? This isn't your George Davis, is it? No, it's his son, Billy. He sometimes works as helper on the bread truck. Okay, kid, where's your dad? Why are you supposed to be driving around? So people think it was him? I wasn't. He took the day off. Uh, may maybe he's gone fishing. He's on this road, isn't he? You're on your way to meet him, aren't you? Honest, maybe he's in Clifftop. He had to see a guy. R really? Well, I can't take you with me, and I can't let you pull a Paul Revere. You stay here till I get back. That same dust, and it's not road dust. Betty, is there some place near here where a car could pick up a powdery gray dust? Some kind of industrial plant? Why, sure, there's, there's an old quarry over near the river. What used to be, it's just a big cliff now. It's over there. It's deserted. Well, it may not be now. Drop me off somewhere near there. Then go and call the police. Tell them to pick up this kid. I'm going to find George.
Where are you going? What do you want? You, George. Robin Hood stuff, eh, city boy? Going to help the girlfriend's old man. Big dead hero. Turn around and start walking. Not that way. That way. Extortion's one thing, George, but homicide's another. Who said anything about murder? You're going to have an accident. Turn around and start walking. I said turn around. All right, now you walk. Not that way, this way. Mike, I was wondering if you were going to say goodbye to your girlfriend. Of course I was. I didn't get much fishing and it wasn't much of a vacation, but it wasn't dull. <laughs> Wait right here. Where are you going? In to get a check. No. Now I said we would pay you. That's payment in full. Well, I'll see you in the city and give you the receipt. <laughs> but the sovereign state of New York. If you tune in on this same channel next week at the same time, you'll see another exciting case reenacted from my private files. Many of the situations have been fictionalized, but what you will witness will be portrayed substantially as it happened and acted on the spot where it happened. You'll witness what occurred in each case when I was assigned to follow that man.